this is Mark, and welcome back to Candle Shore. Why? I find that I've been asking myself this question a lot over the last couple of weeks, especially the last month or so, or maybe even the last six months. It seems like uh, every time I turn around, I'm asking why. Why is it that some people seem to have it all and some people seem not to have anything at all? Some people, why is it that some people, no matter what they do, seem to be like Teflon and some people, no matter what they do, they get blamed for everything? Why was I born in this particular country at this particular time? Why is it when I turn on my computer, I'm always afraid I'm going to lose another network hard drive? Why? Why, why, why? And, or for one more, this morning I was wondering, why is the universe the way it is? You know, it just, why? I'm sure a lot of you ask questions that I couldn't even begin to pose about your own lives. And for a great many of these questions, these whys, I don't know if we'll ever be able to find an answer. I certainly have not, or find some kind of reasoning. However, there are some questions, like why, that you really can get to the bottom of and figure out the answer, the solution. Let me give you a story that recently happened, and then we'll move forward from there. This is going to be a short episode today. At least I'm going to try to keep it short, because I think what I'm saying is pretty much common sense. So I have a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend who, for whatever reason, um, got a crush on some guy that she's known for about eight years. Now, uh, I know them both. And they've always had this kind of, um, you know, banter thing. You know, I'm sure there are people in your life to whom you'd like to be uh, closer to, but because of either circumstance, uh, opportunity, whatever, you know, it just never happened, right? You know, every now and then you got people that you kind of flirt with, and there's different types of flirting, right? There's people that you flirt with that you know will never, anything will ever come of it. And then there are people that you flirt with that you think, well, maybe not now, but maybe later. And I don't know which one of these, the two people I'm about to refer to falls into, but let's just assume it's one of them. I think it's the second one, but I don't know. Anyway. The guy is one of these um, confirmed bachelors uh, who really will never settle down. Never. I mean, he's just, I've known women this way. I've known men this way. And they keep a bevy of women. I hate to say bevy, but, well, this is going to get, I'm going to keep it simple. They, they are, there are some of us, some of us men, and I'm sure women are the same way, but I know it happens to us, we men, that you keep a coalition of women around. Um, for various reasons. Um, because women like, fortunately for us, like to take care of men, right? I mean, you know, especially single guys. Uh, it's just the way it is. I, I don't know if it's by nature or nurture, but whatever the case is. So this guy uh, has, he would say, ne- he, he would never say he has a girlfriend, and I wouldn't say it either. He's just, he, I went through a phase like this in my life also, where you have just quote-unquote friends. And whether they're friends with benefits or not is anybody's guess. The only two people who really know that are the people involved, right? But the bottom line is, uh, and this is, I'm going to make a generalization, so don't jump down my throat. When a guy has a, a good coalition in place, there is little motivation to change it, to settle down with one woman. Okay, I'm just, this is the truth. People don't like the truth, but that's the truth. Usually, when if a guy, if a guy is fortunate enough, either handsome enough, rich enough, sharp enough, gallant enough, whatever, and he can pull that off, uh, settling down with just one woman, just there's nothing attractive about it. There's a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of baggage comes with a monogamous relationship. I'm a monogamous relationship kind of guy, so don't start saying I'm talking about me, but. I also know both sides of the coin. When you have a monogamous relationship with one person, in this case one woman, then you got to worry about her feelings, 
you got to consider her thoughts and feelings on things. You lose some freedom. There's always the inevitable boredom. And I'm not suggesting this is inherent in a relationship, but from a person who's got, again, a coalition of, of people, uh, it, the, you know, the benefits just aren't as great as they used to be in the old days, especially if you are over 50 and you have no desire to have children. You know, usually people want to settle down, quote unquote, because they want to start a family, buy a home, um, have more stability. But we're finding that more and more people above 50 are in, are acting like teenagers, as it were, you know? And especially with, especially with men, most men over 50 can get women under 50. So, to settle down with a woman who is above 50 just does not, uh, the, the, the debt ratio is just a bit high. All right. So let me get, that's his perspective. Okay. So my friend's perspective, the guy I'm talking about, I know him, but he's not a close friend. My friend's perspective, she has known this about him for eight years. So, uh, and it's been fine. Now she's been going out with various guys and she's kind of a, a uh, one man at a time kind of woman, which is a good thing. Although she's not perfect, but who is, right? Except me. Just kidding. So she needs to go. Uh, she had two tickets to this um, big concert, concert series. And it was out of town. And all her friends who were supposed to go with her, in fact, the people that she bought the ticket for, uh, canceled. And so she asked this man, to whom I just spent way too much time describing his lifestyle, as I understand it, to go with her. So he says yes, and they go. And uh, they had a good time over the, at, on this trip. It was an overnight trip. Now, this, of course, had been the first time they'd ever spent um, time together to this extent. And uh, I really, I think she's always kind of liked him, liked him, right? Not liked him, liked him, but liked him, liked him. But then when he had this trip, then she really started liking, 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 liked him. Okay. So, she develops this crush. Oh, and by the way, um, apparently, and this is, just, I'm getting this from her, of course, you know, there's a little kissy, nothing, no, no, no intimacy, as it were, but, and this guy's kind of a flirt. You know, again, when you, when you're used to playing women or playing the field, or when you're used to just, being a player, player, you know, you, 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 you are always cultivating new people for the coalition. And even though she's never, this particular, my friend has never been part of his coalition, I, I understand from his perspective, uh, you know, do I really want to, do I want to add her to the coalition? And, and you know, a lot of women who are the recipient of these types of relationships are usually not satisfied with it, but they put up with it because it's better than nothing or because they have the hope that it's going to move forward. And I, I'm using male and female and, and the way I'm using this is because of the perspective. Obviously, this is not gender specific. It could be the exact opposite too, you know, where the woman has a bunch of men. Although I think that's rarer because, uh, well, whatever. Anyway, it may be in the n n current generation, maybe it is common. I don't know. I'm too old to care. All right. So, and my point is, he's always cultivating, looking for new women, kind of. Not look. well, okay, let's just leave it at that. Anyway, so they do a little flirty, flirty, apparently a little kissy, 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 whatever. She comes back with a massive crush on this guy, massive. And I remember we talked several times, and I said, you know, you never liked him like this before. Well, yeah, but he saw this. And, and I said, what about the fact that he's got a bunch of women to whom he's not committed to any of them, doesn't give anybody full time, but just kind of plays the field? She goes, yes, but I think that'll be different with us. Now, I want to make it clear that he never once said he wanted a relationship with my friend. She just all of a sudden started saying she wanted a relationship with him. And I said to her from, the, from Jump Street, from the beginning, this man will never be tamed and certainly not tamed by you. Because I'll tell you right now, if you've known somebody, I'm, again, I'm just going to speak from my own gender perspective, so but it doesn't matter. If you've known somebody for 12 years, 16 years, 20 years, and nothing's come of it, it's very unlikely. And it's possible. People see it on TV, blah, blah, blah. We knew each other for 30 years, and we got together after our spouse has died. I understand. These things can happen. But where there's, where there's, where, where no uh, change in circumstance, where there's no dramatic change in circumstance, it rarely does happen. 
So she starts, I'll say, soliciting him, you know, calling him, seeing how she, blah, 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 you know, all that stuff. And he, and I, I, I'll tell you right now, I called him a friend, but I really don't like him. I don't like guys who deceive people. And it's not like he is one of the, um, in my younger days, when I dated multiple women, I told them, you know, they said, well, are we exclusive? No. I just come out and say it, and then they could have a choice to either say, you know, I, that's the way I went. This guy's not like that. A lot of people aren't. He's, he makes everybody think that they're the only ones when they're really not. And that's kind of scuzzy, skeezy. So I don't like that about him. I don't like him. And I say, you know, so I don't, I have no respect for this guy. Instead of just saying to her, and I, again, it's hard to say, but you know, hey, I like you as a friend. Let's just leave it at that. You know, he, uh, kind of, you know, responds, but only to a point, which is by, you know, provocative emails and stuff. So finally they have lunch and she tells him, I want to, I want to be your person. You know, I want to be your, I guess, girlfriend or whatever or something, or I want to move forward. And she makes it very clear to him that she wants a monogamous relationship. So he doesn't give her an answer. See, if that had been me back and if I were play, doing his thing, I'm like, you know, that's not going to happen. I wouldn't say it so crudely, but I'd say that's probably not my style at this point. Um, but he just said, oh, I'll think about it or something like that. Okay. It doesn't really matter. The particulars don't matter. What really matters is she starts doing things to try to get his attention. So he had a birthday. And for his birthday, she ordered all these things. And I said to her, why are you doing this? Because I just wanted, you know, have him to, to, to have a nice birthday. And I said, you know, if you don't think he's got tons of women giving him presents and doing things, uh, you know, just, just if you're doing it, do it for the right reasons, which is because you really want to. Well, of course I'm doing it because I want to. Fine. So she goes overboard and gets all these really neat things for his pr- birthday, sends them over to his house. He sends her a text, and this is on the day of his birthday now. He's, and she's all excited, blah, blah, blah. He sends her a text message that says, thank you so much for the gift. I, I really appreciate it. Something like that. And that's it. Now, mind you, she's never sent him presents before. In the, for the last eight to ten years, the only thing they ever did was maybe send a text message or maybe a card back and forth. But that's the extent of it. So. The next day, she calls him. Or maybe it was that night. And said, I just want to tell you happy birthday in person. He said, thank you. I had a nice birthday. And I appreciate your presence. Absolutely no. Um, no when you windows, no, no, let's get together. So when she calls me, she's angry. I can't believe he didn't invite me to do something with him on his birthday. I can't believe that blah, 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 after all I did, blah. it was all one-sided, you understand, except to the extent that he was flirting with her or continues to flirt. Again, I, I personally think if you know someone likes you, likes you, likes you, and you know for sure that you don't like them like them and that there's no chance of you liking liking them, you really should be honest and say, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You make me feel very special. You deserve somebody who can give you the attention and time you need, and that's probably not me, or that's not me. You know, something like that. Be upfront, but of course, no. I, I don't blame him for any of this, just for the record. It's her. She did all this in her mind. So when she called me, she was livid. I mean, angry. I couldn't believe it. calling him names, um, not being nice. So I said to her, you have to ask yourself, why did you do what you did? Why? She wasn't really trying to make him have a nice birthday. I mean, that's part of it. But her real motivation was so he would give her the attention she wanted. Now, it's not like she bought him a diamond watch or something, okay? It, she she didn't get him any presents that, uh, if he kept it, he would be a slime dog. These weren't anything like that. But it, just the effort. And she wanted, being, she wanted to be included on his birthday. Included with any activities he may have. Didn't happen. And believe it or not, this was a couple of weeks ago. And uh, she's still angry. Now, in addition to that, they're no longer talking once or twice a week like they used to be because 
uh, I guess he realizes, hey, you know, she's just not content to just be his friend. It's a shame because they, you know, they, according to her, they got along really well. And according to him, when I talked to him, they got along really well. So it's, it, you know, you have to know why, you, you know, I, and this is why I say why. I, I ask her before, I ask her now, why are you angry at him? Be angry at yourself for building something up in your mind that had no chance of ever happening, in my opinion. And I say, if you, again, you look at an external, the external factors, it would be as if you said you wanted to date somebody who's an alcoholic and thinking they're going to stop drinking because you're so wonderful. It's not going to happen. So that's the crux of this whole thing is why? Why did we do what we do? I'm, I ask myself, I didn't used to, but as I get older, I find that I do it more. I'm questioning why I do the things I do. And sometimes I'm not happy with the answers, which means I have to change my behavior. I want you to do the same thing. Ask yourself when you do, whatever you do, whatever you do, are, are you doing it because you, you want to bene- help someone? Because you want some attention? I mean, we all want some attention, but you know what I mean. And then maybe you will find, if you are honest enough with yourself, that some of the mysteries in your life won't be mystery, mysterious anymore. Possible. Hey, remember to make a joyful noise, and I'll see you back here soon. Take care.